Hey everybody, it's Josh here. In this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to optimize your images for web using Adobe Bridge. Now, most of my tutorials are based around Divi and WordPress. This is actually gonna be applicable to anyone who has a website who's uploading images to it, or anyone who's using the Adobe Suite for that matter. There are a ton of tools that you can use to optimize your images. Photoshop is one of the most popular. There's a ton of free ones online. I like using Adobe Bridge because it's really good for optimizing images in bulk. So for example, I have a project right now where they have literally hundreds of galleries, which is equal to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of images. So if I were to go into Photoshop or a different tool and have to do an image one by one, it would take me forever. Adobe Bridge is a great way to optimize images in bulk. Now, if you're new to web design or you're not familiar with what image optimization is or why it's so important, let me give you some basics. What I've done here is I've downloaded eight stock images and I'm gonna show you, give you a walkthrough of how these images are formatted. So you can see by default, this image is a JPEG. It's 1.2 megabytes MB, which is really big, and it's 3000 pixels wide. Now, it's extremely important that you optimize your images for web if you're not familiar because when images are downloaded from stock photo sites or they're downloaded from your camera, initially they're very, very big. The reason being is because images need to look good on billboards and they need to look good on posters and bigger prints and mediums but that's not gonna bode well for your website. The biggest cause to sites loading slowly is because images are really big. And I'm sure if you're in web design, this has happened to you just like it's happened to me, where you turn your website over for the client to start updating, they're uploading a bunch of massive images and it's killing the load time and then they're calling you wondering why their website's loading so slow. So this is gonna alleviate that. I'm also gonna link to the tutorial that I send my clients on how to optimize images. And it also has a free tool that you can use if you don't have Adobe Bridge or other uh, tools or platforms. So anyway, these are all really, really big images. So what we need to do is optimize these so they're ready to go online. So we're gonna go ahead and pop open Adobe Bridge. We're gonna look into these images. Now again, we're only dealing with a handful of images here, but this is extremely useful. You know, pretend like we have like 50 or 60 images here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open all these. And instead of opening them, opening them with Photoshop or something like that, I'm actually going to use Camera Raw, which is which comes included with Adobe Bridge. So you're gonna have this option. So I'm gonna right click and open in Camera Raw. And what this does is this gives me the ability to edit these in bulk. So you could go through, again, this is more of a photography software. I learned this uh, when I was studying some photography, but it's also great for web. So you could go in and you can actually edit the photos here if you wanted to but we're gonna just specialize on optimizing. So I'm gonna click Command A, and I'm gonna select all of the images here on the left, and I'm gonna go down here to Save Images. Now, when I click Save Images, you'll notice it brings up this really handy window. This window is all of our save options. So let's walk through this real quickly. First things first, you can select where you want these images to be saved. Again, if you have a ton of images, this is gonna be extremely helpful. The next most important area is the file naming. So it actually gives us an option to name these images separately. So we don't wanna override the current image. We actually want to save web versions of the image. I do this all the time. It's extremely helpful because if a client sends you, you know, uh, staff photos or, or big photos, generally you wanna keep the high res ones, but you do wanna have the web ones separately. So you can create an extension. So what I've done is labeled web dash and then the document name. So every photo that saves here, it's gonna save as web dash, whatever the, the photo name is. You can set here what format you want it to be. Generally JPEGs are great for regular images. You can go in here and even get into more details. You can limit certain file sizes. Um, you could get in here. One thing that's really important with images if you're not familiar, is color spacing. So images a lot of times are based in CMYK, which is good for print, but you want all web images to be in RGB, which is gonna be good for web. And then there's image sizing. This is the most important part here. What's really cool about this is you can click resize to fit, and this is gonna adjust the height and the width. But again, you could go into even more detail if you wanted to. Generally, I keep all of my images at around 1440, which is just a good mid-range wide image. That should look good on bigger screens and smaller screens. I never exceed 1920, which is generally just for like slider images or big backgrounds. And then what's cool about this too is you can set the height to make sure it doesn't exceed 1000 pixels. 
That way, if you have an image that's really vertical, it's not going to see to 1,000. And again, in our resolution, just like I mentioned previously, resolutions are for web are good at 72. When images are downloaded as from stock photo sites or cameras, they're going to be really big. They're going to actually be either 150 or 300, and you do not want to upload big resolution images. So web images, you want to keep in RGB color mode and 72 resolution, and generally pixel-wise, you don't need to go about further than I mean, maybe around 1500, no more than 2000 personally. There's no right or wrong on that. That's just my personal opinion. So we've got all these images pulling in as JPEGs. They're in the right color mode. The width and height is not gonna exceed these pixels here and they're set at 72. So let's go ahead and save these. And you'll see down here at the bottom left, it's gonna give you a notice with all these images saving. So we'll wait till that's done. We'll go ahead and click done. And now we can see those images there. So check this out. If I go back into my folder here, you can see all the big images and take a look at how big a lot of those are. You know, that one's 2.1 megabytes, that one's you know, almost 4,000 pixels wide. And then check this out when I hit web, there we go. It's much smaller. Now, let, actually, let's take a look at the first one. So this one was 1.2 megabytes and 3,000 pixels. Let's look at that same image here with the web extension. And now it's 531 kilobytes and 1440 pixels, which is much, much smaller. Now you could optimize this even more, but again, we know that this is a lot smaller and it's gonna load much better. Now, the next step that I take in this case would generally be to set up a folder for web images. So I'm just gonna call this folder web, hold shift, move all these in there. And now if I go back out to my folder, you can see all these images are the originals, the high res, and then I have a folder for web. Now we could go one step further too with Adobe Bridge, which is one thing I love. You can click these open and you can scroll through them, which is really handy. And then you can also mark them. So for example, let's pretend like I have images that I want to be a slider. Let's go into the web folder and let's create a folder for slider images. Let's pretend like three of these we want as sliders. I'm gonna go ahead and click which ones I want. So I'm gonna hold down Command and we're just gonna select these three. And what I'm gonna do is label these. So you can label an Adobe Bridge by holding down Command and pressing any number. So you could do one, two, three. This is really helpful for photographers if you have a ton of images and you have some good ones and then some really good ones and you wanna narrow them down. But I use this all the time in web design for this case. So if I have images that are maybe need to be galleries or maybe some are sliders, this is how I do it. So I'm gonna pretend like three stars are sliders, and then I'm actually just gonna move these over to the slider folder. So now I know that these are gallery images, and in here are my actual slider images. And again, we've optimized all these, so we know all the images in here are ready to go online. They're gonna look good. So if you have any questions, let me know, guys. Otherwise, I hope this has been a good walkthrough of what image optimization is and why it's so important to do this before your website. Again, I'm gonna link the video that I send to my clients, so you're welcome to use that. There is a free tool that's super handy that you can check out, and uh, you can, if you wanna forward that on to your clients as well, you're more than welcome to, and hopefully this really helps you out. All right, guys, cheers, and enjoy having much faster loading websites.